to once again pass our now fourth bipartisan legislation to address the coronavirus crisis. We're very pleased with the vote, 388 to 5, 388 to 5, passing under suspension in a recorded vote. Uh, we had a masterful leadership of Richie Neal uh, managing the bill on the floor for us, and he disciplined so many of us to stick our, uh, keep our remarks to 30 seconds. Uh, so I will use 30 of the seconds to acknowledge the greatness of our leadership of our committees who made this important uh, event possible and then take 30 seconds to comment on it. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, the chair of the Financial Services Committee, just was remarkable. Uh, she brought her depth of knowledge of the, um, uh, of the financial industry as well as her deep values about making everyone have access. Uh, Nydia Velasquez, the chair of the Small Business Committee, just a champion, uh, one of the first women in Congress to ever serve as a chair, a, full, a chair of a full committee, and she brought all of that experience, knowledge, judgment, and values uh, to this legislation. It was really remarkable to see the two of them interact, two powerful women in Congress, making a tremendous difference. And what was important about it was it took a giant step in loosening that, that hard grip of uh, disparity of access to credit in our country. Uh, but they made something very special happen uh, to try to cr uh, have that crumble, and I think that's very important for the American people. Frank Pallone Pol uh, cannot be here, but he and his staff were very helpful with, uh, for us with the, uh, uh, the hospital and testing parts of the bill. So you know that what the bill does Two weeks ago, it was proposed on a Thursday on the floor of the Senate that we would have legislation that led to 250, that was it, nothing else, and that's it. For a week and a half, that was the position of the administration and the Republicans in the Senate until this past weekend when finally they saw the light that we could do much more for our small businesses. So $60 billion in a set aside for, shall we say, the underbanked, the women, minorities, veterans, Native Americans, rural folks, people who didn't have big banking relationships but had big credit needs. Another $60 billion in loans and grants for small businesses, all of small businesses. And then $100 billion, $100 billion for hospitals and testing. Quite a remarkable feat. So we have 250 and 220, 470 today, but all of it in interest of job retention and a first and foremost to address the key issue of health. Testing, 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 contact tracing, the initiatives that are necessary uh, to be the key to open, open up our economy. So with that, that was a long 30 seconds, I know, but I do want to yield to our distinguished chair and see a leader in the, in the House to see if he can do better than I in sticking to the 30 seconds. Thank you, Richie Neal, for your help in all four of these bills. Uh, your committee is, I know, ready for the next bill, our heroes bill, where we will address the needs of our heroes, our healthcare workers, our police and fire teachers, our transportation workers, and the rest who are on the payroll of our state and local governments. And that will be the centerpiece of our next legislation. With that, I'm pleased to yield to the distinguished leader of the Democratic leader of the House, Mr. Hoyer. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker. The, uh, the bill that passed today could have passed two weeks ago because it added, I think, things that the president obviously is going to support. He's going to sign this bill. It added $120 billion for what everybody says they want to support, the health and success of small business and their ability to keep people on the job and their ability to come back and create jobs when we open up the society, consistent with our health experts and our scientific experts. And in addition to that, we did what everybody knows is necessary. Our hospitals have been inundated with patients they did not expect, and the tax on their 
resources has been great. And we want to keep them working. We want to keep them resourced. Uh, and then we know, lastly, that every expert says the key to doing what almost everybody in America wants to do, some demonstrating about it, opening up our government, the key is testing. And the key is testing sufficient numbers of people so you know that you have a handle uh, on the virus. You know you are quarantining, isolating those who need to be isolated. Uh, and you know uh, who to treat. And then you know what tracing you need to do, because you know and ask, where, who have you been in touch with? And the experts all tell us that's the key. So this bill answers, I think, a universal uh, information that we have as to how to proceed. It's a shame that it took uh, a couple of weeks to get there, but Madam Speaker, you were tenacious and focused and uh, uh, I think did the right thing because we got uh, uh, substantially improved. And very frankly, as an appropriator, when you're bargaining between 250 and 500 and you end up with 484, that's a pretty good deal. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, uh, Speaker Pelosi. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I am the chair of the Financial Services Committee, the first African American, the first woman in the history of this country. And Nancy Pelosi is the speaker, serving a second time, uh, historical achievements. Nita Velasquez, the chair, of the subcommittee, of the committee rather, of SBA. And so what we are witnessing at this moment in our history is how diversity makes a difference. How diversity makes a difference in the way uh, that we understand how to have target and include women, minorities, African Americans, Latinos, et cetera. And oftentimes we're doing the work and it's not noticed because the issues of financial services are not that sexy. But I want to tell you, this particular piece of legislation, this supplemental, this emergency bill, really points out how diversity makes a difference. Nancy Pelosi is an extraordinary negotiator. She has gotten more out of the Senate and out of the Treasury than any person could ever do uh, because she put her mind to it. She put the time in and negotiated in the wee hours of the morning. Nitty Velasquez knows SBA better than anybody in this Congress. And she was able to close some gaps and increase spending in ways that will benefit not only all people, but minorities. And so when you take a look at the supplemental appropriation that we have done added to the CARES bill, you will see that we have opened up opportunities for people who have traditionally been excluded, for people who have had, not had relationships with the government, some who have not had banking relationships, but there are small businesses out there, small businesses who are doing wonderful things in our community and they are helping to create jobs. And I think we've responded to them in ways that they will appreciate. I know uh, that we needed more money and we put more money into it. I know that there are people with the numbers waiting, standing in line who will now be serviced. I'm just pleased and proud uh, to be a member of Congress at this time and the chair of the Financial Services Committee. Thank you, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you, Thank you Maxine. Mr. Neal, chairman of the Committee. And the legislative process actually worked in this instance, recalling that uh, the two chambers sometimes offer competing or contrasting pieces of legislation, and then they have to be melded together. And the speaker is a master at it. But recall that this is a much improved piece of legislation than the one that came from the Senate originally. So the two institutions, I, the two chambers of the institution, I thought that they functioned uh, quite well. And the other thing is, despite all of uh, the rhetoric you heard on the floor today, I mean, 395 people voted for this. So you've had now four successive bipartisan achievements with the understanding that we have to get ready for the next round. And the, the next round is obviously going to be uh, 
state and local government assistance and a number of other features. So we're not done with the work yet, but I am very hopeful and I thought that uh, Maxine and, and Nidia did a really terrific job of putting this legislation together. And, and you know, when you carve this together on the phone, it's tough. It's hard to do it face to face. It's really hard to do it on the phone because you can't get the eye contact or the emotions of what people are thinking or even sometimes the rolled eyes that you might, that you might have. So uh, the legislation after the speaker uh, offers her signature, I believe the president's going to sign it tonight. So this is a pretty good piece of work. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Neal, and thank you for the work you are already doing on the next bill. Now the distinguished chair of the Small Business Committee, Mr. Valencia, and Mr. Thank you. I am really proud of the work that we accomplish here today. I always say that small business is big business in America and that there is no Republican or Democratic approach when it comes to deal with issues impacting small businesses. And we try to do that. And it's a shame that two weeks later, um, we were in this predicament of making changes that were necessary. Madam Speaker, thank you for standing your ground, for reaching out to us, recognizing that we have the expertise, the knowledge, and that we have th something to offer when it comes to legislation of our respective committees. So what we did in this bill was to make it better and more efficient. And still, we have a lot of work to do. But the bill that was passed in the Senate only provided $250 billion for PPP. We added money for disaster loan, $50 billion that will leverage $377 billion in disaster loan. That wasn't in the Senate bill, and it was very important. Let me, let me explain to you why. Because the $250 billion PPP will not work for many businesses in our country, like New York, California, and any state where there is a shutdown. Because once the money is dispersed and you take that money, you only have eight weeks to rehire your workers. Places like New York, we're still closed for businesses. So what is another tool that we provide for those businesses that cannot uh, get the PPP? Disaster loan that offers 30 years, 30 years term for that money to be repaid and low interest rates. So I am proud that not only we are saving small businesses and making them whole, but we are saving lives. We added money for the hospital, for testing, and that is an incredible accomplishment. People need, and the president and the Republicans, they need to understand that in order to open, to say that we are open for business, is by making sure that you're gonna have customer walking through the doors of your business. And unless we address the issue of the coronavirus, that will never happen. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Well, as I'm about to uh, sign this historic legislation, I want to acknowledge uh, the, uh, the cooperation we had uh, from the distinguished Republican leader, Mr. McCarthy. I wish that he could have been here now, uh, but I do want to thank him and the uh, members of the Republic, all of the members of Congress. But I want to especially thank our House Democratic Caucus, which was very unified. As you saw, the diversity of our, of our leadership on the committees made a difference in the policy. And as I always say to the caucus, our diversity is our strength. Our unity is our power. And that's how we were able to get this crossing of the threshold of more credit at underbanked uh, businesses in our country, and also a testing uh, piece that was very strong in terms of asking for a strategic national plan uh, to address testing and to do so keeping data as to how different communities are affected. Uh, so again, diversity 
playing in here in terms of policy uh, that now we will act upon. And we'll act upon it after the bill is signed by the president in order to send it to him. It is my honor to sign it. But I do so very sadly and prayerfully. Maxine learned today that her sister has been diagnosed with the virus. Our distinguished colleague, Cong uh, Madam Chair Vasquez, herself was diagnosed with this. It could happen to anybody at any time. On the floor, we heard about a five-year-old girl who died from the virus. So for the, st the numbers are staggering, nearly 50,000 dead, 900,000 uh, diagnosed. But every single incidence of it uh, strikes home to some family and to each of us as well for them. So prayerfully and sadly, we always thank our first responders, our healthcare workers, our, all of the, uh, our teachers, our, our transit workers, our food uh, workers as well, everyone who has kept us together uh, in, the, in these few weeks. But our hearts and prayers go to those who have lost their loved ones uh, at this very, very sad time. And so in sadness, as well as with some satisfaction of what we have accomplished, I'm very now honored to sign this legislation. This is called the enrollment ceremony. This is what has to be signed in the House by the Speaker of the House before we send it uh, to the President. 